Okay, as I said yesterday, we'll do something with a realistic TRC-1007. Um, these go back to the service manuals dated 1987, two of the radios are dated 1988, and two of the radios are dated 1989. Our original one, which we bought for our original tests, is this one. And apart from when we did our tests, it, when these came out, in, uh, in this case, 1988, that's not been touched since. So we know how it should perform. We've got the full service manual from the manufacturer. Very, very good manuals. The realistic manuals are absolutely brilliant. So I can put my original one to one side. That leaves us with three. The, over the last couple of years, I've picked up these three off eBay. And when I've seen these at the right price, in inverted commas, then I've bought them. I can't remember what the right price is, probably about £5.50 or something like that. Two of these there's nothing we can do with, and one we can. And what we're going to end up having to do is to knit two into one. And the reason I say this is that two have got broken telescopic aerials. There's absolutely nothing we can do about that. Tandis was bought up by um, Carphone Warehouse, was it 99, something like that, and then it was all disbanded. And... Um, because this was a UK only model, I can't even order from the United States as if it was a um, one of their own models, which some, on some models you could do that, especially with cosmetic items. You know, you could find the equivalent American model with the backs, battery doors, and, and order them and it would all work out. But um, when it's telescopic aerials, uh, that's not the case. Two of these have suffered severe corrosion. If I just zoom in on that, and this is one of the 1988 ones. There's nothing we're going to be doing with that. However, that's the one with the intact telescopic aerial. So that's where we're going to get the telescopic aerial from. And the best bet, that's got some corrosion. But I'm sure it's um, quite repairable or may even work. So I'll put that to one side as well. So what we'll do is we'll put the mega corroded radio's telescopic aerial on the broken telescopic one, which is in lovely condition, and it's dated 1989, so it's a later one. So I think we'll go for that one, and I'll open it up. And just before I do open it up, you'll see that the battery compartment here isn't without some green lovely corrosion so I don't know whether it's had an ingress of moisture or whether it's battery corrosion this is the one I want to get going so we'll go through that um, and hope there isn't anything inside the other side of that you know if that's been in water the printer circuit board's going to be uh, in a pretty state as well okay having taken it apart it's absolutely beautiful condition on the uh, component side wonderfully made you know you just can't argue over that and there's no corrosion on the inside, so it'll just be something to deal with that uh, battery contact, which I'm sure is something I can do with that, with the various chemical cleaners we have here. So the first thing to do is I'll just simply swap this telescopic aerial to hold them by one bolt there. So we'll just whip that out. And we'll just, the one I've taken out of the other set, the corroded set, we can just pop that in. There we are, it's located, and so that's sorted that problem out. And now it's just a matter of, we'll work on the radio, and then we'll worry about that corrosion problem. Do you know, it fails to, I just cannot see why somebody pays 100 quid for a really high quality radio like this, and then snaps the aerial off. You know, it beggars belief, it really does. You know, I'm not in that kind of position. I've got to look after things at this end. Mind you, I've had the same mobile phone 13 years, but I think I've only done 10 texts on it and three other calls. Right, um, I'll get the service manual out. We'll make a, make a chart up of what adjustments we need to do. Uh, I've just um, photocopied that blown up from the manual, and I'll make a note of what ne we need to do, and then we'll get on with the VCO and the transmitter. Now, these are one of these sets which annoyingly start up on channel 9. So... Uh, 
It's a pseudo rotary channel switch. And we are 20. I've got external mic plugged in. It's a Tandy original. We have several of these in stock. External speaker plugged into the earphone jacket, so we're into the test equipment. External antenna, so we're going into the test equipment. An external power, which is set for 12 volts rather than 13.8. I'm just checking. It's, ah, it's 12.5. I was lying. It's things like this are important. You know, these aren't intended to run on 13.8. Tandy's at the time did a cigarette adapter which had a dropper network in it. And that's so they work properly when they're on batteries. And properly, they certainly do work. I think we've had about uh, 14 miles out of one of these. The next thing I'm going to do is take the screening can off and we'll go into the VCO. Okay, so we're now on test point three. We're on channel one. And we're supposed to have round about one volt. Well, we've got 2.2. I'm just going to whip to channel 40. And that comes up to 5. So that is in lock. I know that's not exactly what the book says, but it really doesn't matter. That's within... It, it, the whole idea about doing the VCO is to make sure that the thing's in lock. If we needed to adjust it, the VCO adjustment is this coil here which is T5, and I'll tell you what, we'll just pop it down a fraction, and then we'll check, in, we'll check it's locked in channel 40, and it's locked in channel 40, and we'll check it's locked in transmit. And it's locked in transmit, though the radio doesn't transmit. We never said it worked. Okay, what I've done while you weren't all looking is I've actually swapped the radio. The one I was working on has no transmit. There's something wrong with the transmitter, no doubt, because of its duff aerial. So what I've done is to look at the less corroded one of the two corroded ones and decided that's in better condition and, and actually kind of works. So we're going to go for that one instead. Then I'll probably swap the back off the non-corroded one onto this one. So, yeah, we're still at the same point, And what we've got is, we're on that test point three. We've got the, um, well, I've got 1.8 volts now for the VCO. And uh, there's the meter. So on that test point, I've got 1.8, 1.9, and this, it's the same on transmit, and of course, as I mentioned before, it's transformer 5, we're adjusting for that. So, having done that, and having swizzled them over while you weren't looking, I, uh, I better go for the transmit lineup. Now, as I say, this set is basically transmitting. I'll just plug the external microphone back in. It's a bit easier than faffing around with the, the body of the set. There we go. So, this, these radios should do between 3.5 and 4 watts. The manufacturer says if it does under 3 watts, it needs repairing. So... There we go, that's what we're aiming at. And as I look at this, we oh, better go on channel 20. It's just under 3 watts. It is. Okay, so first thing we need to do on transmit is L3. I'll just zoom in so we can see a bit better. And L3 is a green open construction coil there. So I've peaked that. The second one we do is Transformer 7, which is in the can.
and that's Pete. Third one we do is trans is T8, which is the next one in the can. And the next one we do is T9, which is next to the heat sink there. And then we move on to, looking at my notes, coil 5, which is the open construction green coil there. Moving on to L6. Which has neatly brought us to 3 watts. Then we adjust the power, when we've tuned all that, the, there's a power control, it says, which is this preset here, which is VR3. To be honest, that wants cleaning, which I'll just do off camera. Okay, so with careful manipulation um, with the coils, going backwards and forwards with it, it's doing three and a half watts, which is absolutely ideal. You don't want to push the power on these, even if it was going to do it, because obviously when you're using it as a hand portable, the more power it gives out, the less um, uh, the more current consumption it is, and the less your battery life. So these are sold as a three and a half watt radio. They're capable of doing four, it says sometimes, um, and the limit is uh, is three. So it came up in at two point eight. It's doing eight hundred and sixty milliamp consumption for a three and a half watt output, which of course is very good. So we I'll put the screening cam back on off the non corroded set. Now it helps considerably putting the display putting the can back if we take the display off. So I've just done that, and that just plugs back in. That's Setting up the deviation properly on this looks quite some kind of rigmarole. What's supposed to happen is you locate test point 6, you then set variable resistor 2 for 2.5 volts. Then you set variable resistor 1 for 1 kilohertz deviation, and then you reset variable resistor 2 for your required deviation which of course is 2.5 maximum so it's a bit of a faff but of course it's got an automatic uh, mic control with it being a hand portable with a built in condenser mic it's got this automatic level control and this is how it's set up so we'll get the test meter out and I'll locate test point 6 okay according to the manual there's three resistors one two three that is resistor 79 that one there the third one on the one on the right and according to the information that is the test point so I'll just zoom back out and I'll see what I've got. And I've got 2.54. So just in line with what it says, we'll adjust variable resistor 2. And it has adjusted, so it's quite clearly the correct one. OK. And then we'll go back to our normal procedure with the different uh, with the signal generator. So I'll set the my radio test set to go into deviation mode. I'll switch you the camera on. Which for some reason isn't. Uh, hmm.
Okay, I can't show you the external camera for some reason. You'll have to take my word for this. It's right over the top. Um, it's. Hmm. Sh... Just give it the whistle test. <whistles> Wallow. <whistles> it's over the top. That. So I'll go back to the little um, oscillator. Adjusting RV1 now. I think that's we've got a dirty preset situation there. It's trouble with second hand walkie talk, you just do not know where they've been. There we go, that's set up to one. And then we'll set up the other one to throw it to two and a half. There we go. <whistles> Wallow. Right, well, that's quite a faff to set up, but I've done it and it's uh, now the right deviation. And I've just got our monitor receiver here, and we're using the external mic 12345 54321. 12345, testing 12. Oops, just about pulled the thing off the bench. Right, we'll zoom out from that, and we need to check that the low power is working. In low power mode, mode of course, it should be using it doing 0 0.4 of a watt. It's not adjustable on these radios, and in this case, it's doing 0.4 of a watt. Well, that was all right, wasn't it? The manual says anything between 0.1 and 0.4 is acceptable. So we just need to verify that it's on frequency. And you know what? I put that screening cam back, and of course, it's the variable capacitor in there which we'd need to set the frequency with. Now it should be 27.79125, it's 27.79112, so we'll just take that screening cam back off. Once again I'm lying to you, it's not the screening cam that needs to come off, but it needs the display board that needs to come out, because the adjustment is just the far side of the crystal there. Which is that one there, so we'll just adjust that for the correct frequency so that's 27 of course now we're on channel 9 so I'm going to have to count the channels up aren't I 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 And there we have it, 27.79124, so that will do nicely. I'll be putting the display board back. And that concludes the transmit on the realistic TRC-1007.